Afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Political Fight Club. I'm your host, Robert Durden. I'm going to do a show for you today on one subject and one subject alone. A study came out recently that's been a lot on the uh, left wire, and it is one of the most astounding studies I've ever seen in terms of proving the wealth inequality and how it has gone off the rails in terms of the billionaires and the 1% in particular just taking all of the money from the middle class since the mid-70s. So when I drop the actual number on you, it's going to blow your mind whole. And I've seen this study before. It came out a little bit ago, but now some people are starting to take notice of it. And uh, I'm going to talk about that. First thing, and I know I said I was only going to talk about one thing, two things. The uh, Rescue Act or Biden's Rescue Plan did pass the House 219 to 212. Of course, all of the Republicans voted against it. And uh, two Democrats also voted against it. Now, the Republicans, they all tend to ideologically get behind austerity in, t in times like this. So I'm not sure they're going to lose many voters because a lot of Republican voters don't really care to give out stimulus. Some will probably get some backlash depending on how bad it is in their district. Uh, but the two Democrats were Kurt Schrader and Jared Golden. Um, I've never heard of either of them, but let them have it, guys. This should be political suicide. I mean, don't ever let them forget this vote. Don't ever. And they should lose their seat because of it. Absolutely. They should be primaried. Get them out of there. Bad vote. You're out. Strike one, you're out. So let's talk about the study. The study on wealth inequality um, was done by the Rand Institute. And what it basically did was study how much money would have remained in the pockets of the middle class and the lower middle class over the last 40 years had the tax laws and had the laws during the golden age of economics more or less remained in place. So for those of you who don't know, the golden age of economics for the United States was when FDR more or less changed us into a social democracy immediately after World War II. There were extremely high um, taxes on the wealthy, very high top marginal tax rates, corporate tax rates, and um, I, I believe he even pushed a wealth tax, but particularly high top marginal tax rates, uh, as high as 92%. And FDR himself at numerous times believed that he said that during times of stress or emergency in a country that there should be a 100% top marginal tax rate. So um, what they found after they studied this is that if the laws that had remained or had been in place from 1944 to 1975 had been in place until now, that $50 trillion dollars that the 1% now has would instead be in the pockets of the bottom 90%. So the middle class, upper middle class, lower middle class, impoverished. So the top 1% siphoned off $50 trillion over 40 years from the bottom 90%. It blew my mind whole when I read that. And it doesn't, I guess, it all surprise me at all, I suppose. Um, but this brings me to what I think we should do about something like this. And I, for a while, when I was thinking about how I would do my taxes, um, I would just say, for simplicity purposes, if someone asked me, do more or less what FDR did. Um, and I've been tweaking my numbers a little bit and kind of looking into what I would actually do. And I, for simplicity purposes, after reading things like this, I feel like we should do what Jesse Ventura just said we should do which is do a maximum wage and also have a cap on wealth. So that's crazy. That's ultra left wing. I know, you know, it, it, what I would like to do is basically take anything you make beyond a certain amount. You won capitalism. You're good. We'll name a you know, bird sanctuary after you. And everything you make beyond that is taxed at 100%. That's what a wealth cap would be. And the question then becomes, what is that number? And I've been thinking a lot about it. I think that the most anybody could possibly be worth 
is somewhere around a hundred million dollars and even that's a stretch but to give the benefit of the doubt to the people watching here that are a little bit capitalist i'd say that you know maybe you can make an argument that if you're like the best athlete ever best actor ever whatever um you know you you, you do something wonderful invent something that changes the world you should be able to make and keep a hundred million dollars okay that's where i think we should draw the line and Jesse Ventura's maximum wage was this. You're not allowed to ever make more than $1 million a month. That's it. $12 million a year or $1 million a month. And I would set both of those in place right now. And eventually we would take back a lot of the... If you just put those in place right now, I mean, of course, a lot of those billions, those people that are over $100 billion, all of their money just goes back into taxes, which is the way that it should be because no one... No one person should have a wealth of hundreds of billions of dollars. I don't think anybody should have wealth of a billion dollars. Hundred million is all you get. Everything else goes back into the tax system. We'll uh, end poverty. We'll make sure that we end, you know, child hunger, and we'll fix everything in the world. We'll, you know, create an infrastructure that is green and sustainable, and we'll fix everything. We just got to tax the billionaires like that. So that's what I think we should do. It, it is crazy to me that they straight up just stole $50 trillion. So all of that I'm advocating for with these two, if, if we got them passed somehow, which we never would, so this is all hypothetical, we would just Robin Hood them. We just take the, back the money that they stole from us over the last four decades. And also, just on a side note here, isn't it bananas that like, the boomers who went through the golden age of economics getting paid so much money for doing marginal work that would be considered marginal work today. And we know for a fact that the boomers are 77% less productive per capita than the millennials. And yet they got paid up the wazoo, could have families of three, four, five, six, you know, on a single income, working 40 hours a week, always had health care, always had two cars, you know, always were, were able to go to church and give to whatever, you know, charitable organizations you wanted to as much as you wanted to. And you're like a, you know, you're like a, you know, a mailman or a, uh, you know, a mechanic or something like that. I'm just asking for those people to admit that the millennials got shafted and try to help us fix the laws so that we can get back on our feet. But it's, it's crazy that that's like my grandmother never lifted a, she never worked really a day in her life. She married my grandfather who was a salesman and they had a five bedroom house in the nicest area in Michigan, always had two to three cars, always had health insurance. I have two degrees One's a doctorate, one's a bachelor's degree, and I can't make ends meet, and I have to do odd jobs all the time and work the gig economy and try to do this YouTube show and write books on the side. It's just bananas to me that they went through the golden age of economics, and then they look at us, and they're not like, bro, we, we need to fix things for you. This is not fair. But they don't see it. They, they would rather, a lot of them just look down on us. You know, they think we're lazy. They act like the reason we don't have money is because we've spent too much money on avocado peanut butter toast or whatever that shit they said we do. So it's it's crazy. We need to take the power back and start taxing these billionaires. There should be no more billionaires. You you should just you get a hundred million, you're done, we'll give you a medal. And if you ever fall under it, you're welcome to go back up to a hundred million. You go out and spend some money and you're at ninety million, you're welcome to go right back up to a hundred million. But no more than that. Hundred percent tax rate after that. Sorry. Um, so I'll probably do another show tonight, but I don't think I'll have it up tonight. Um, keep fighting the good fight out there, guys. I'll see you later.